You're watching my favorite YouTube channel. I go by the name of Chillmonger. Ms. Marvel Episode 2 came out. I have many things to say about it, specifically about one topic. The whole episode was pretty decent, if you ask me. We begin with... Dun, 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 dun. And then Mace came in, so it was the bad boy version, not the cool and the gang version. Phenomenal entry into the show. It's so fun. They even brought the tune back when they were playing the Ms. Marvel title screens. So already a good start here with the show. The relationship she got with Bruno builds on it. They do some training. And similar to comic books, they were doing it sort of out in the open where people who were living in apartments could probably look and see what's going on over there. Especially with the fluorescent lights and the weird uh, eye attracting powers that she's got which are not consistent with her comic book superpowers and is a completely ridiculous idea and remains to be stupid no matter how good or entertaining this show is changing a superhero superpowers is preposterous and it's never been done before so if we want to treat kamala khan the same way we treat those white superheroes it'd be nice if we can get her story straight so that power was seen basically by people who could be uh, watching outside this important scene here from Bruno explaining to her that she actually has the power from within her might have been a rewrite. I don't think it's actually Kamala. I think it's her body double that he is speaking with here. And then comes the terminology hard light to explain what we're going to call this power. Light comes out of you and it hardens. Let's call it hard light. Good to know. I'm going to go with hard light from now on. Not bad superpowers that they changed from the comic books, unlike with Hulk. Unlike with Captain America, unlike with Iron Man. They didn't say, Iron Man, you're going to go in that cave and you're going to make hard light. It's going to be great. We're going to connect it to other things. They didn't do that. Let's have Kamala Khan's story be consistent, whether it's comic book, video, games, and movies. And then we can all, you know, we can have like a, like a, a new superhero who happens to not be white, be successful, and also not be white, and also not be white and be successful, who's not white. Who's not white, but she's also a successful superhero who has a superpower and a story that is known, that isn't changed and altered and mismatched here and there. Be great to have a character like that who's not white, who's also not white. You see, if the character is white, you see the things. Here's the thing with white characters. <laughs> Side note, this moment where she hits Bruno with her hard light makes it look like it's not a powerful weapon. If he can be able to come back up, we don't see him with any scars and bruises during the whole episode. It makes you think, OK, how significant is this hard light? Later on in the episode, I'm going to see her destroying all of these drones. And it'd be nice to know that the hard light had a consistent power. I'll cover up for the show. Bruno was hit by the hard light, but the light wasn't as hard as it's going to be later on. She's still learning how to get it like that. We now get to the saddest part of the show. It's when they took the onus of sharing Islam with you as if they had some sort of responsibility to do so. And let's get this out the way. Directed by Mira Manan, written by Kate Gritman, Bisha K. Ali is the showrunner. All three of these women don't wear hijabs from the pictures that I've seen. And Sana Aminat, who had a role in this, who had a role specifically in the scene in the washroom where Yasmin, where Nakia and Kamala Khan speak about hijabs, which was very off-putting and we'll get to it. Now I was tipped off with this scene here that I knew what they were going for. They showed you them in the wudu room where they were turning on the faucets and the water wasn't running here. So Kamala's friend Nakia had to go use her water. Then we saw this bathroom tile also fall and you're getting the image that it's worse off over on the sister side of the masjid than it is on the brother side of the masjid. They showed you the partition, how things were divided and they were doing a whole lot of showing, which I'm like, oh, I get it. This is cool. But then they crossed the line. Let me wear it properly. Instead of showing the struggles of a Muslim woman, the show was showing it's a struggle to be a Muslim woman. What they didn't do, though, was consider a whole lot of things that relate to Islam, such as there are five prayers in the day. One of the prayers happened to be early in the morning where it's still dark outside, where you're actually going to most likely have less women attend that prayer. Um, the long story short, what I'm trying to get at is that the masjid or the, the Islamic center communities lean towards men. And it's sort of like something like the Friday prayer is obligatory for a man to attend every day around uh, the daytime. That's something that isn't the case for a woman. You see how like the mosque would lean towards um, oh, favoring or, 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 or hmm, yeah, favoring men over women now if the show wanted to show us that like oh, they got the 
the, the crappy entrance. Oh, look how look how bad it is. Then they could have done that. Law, Something else they got wrong here was the prayer was so rapid. I think what law, the goal of the director was to do was get a lot of Allahu Akbar's on screen, but that was way too quickly to actually have. I'll just take my word for it. It was too quick, okay? This wide shot here showed you an equal amount of men and women in the room. And I think that's very telling of what they were trying to show you in the show. And like I told you, it's not accurate to have that many women here as equal amount as the men at a mosque on any day of the week, honestly. But the show was trying to give you like this, um, like like even equality type talk. Um, I, I prefer accuracy. I mean, there's going to be times it's not impossible that that scenario would happen. But if that was a Friday prayer, that wouldn't be the case. And we get Nakia telling Kamala, there's mold all over the place. It's so pristine over on the other side. So this was the just natural conversation that just came up. Or was the show trying to tell you? They showed me, but now they're trying to tell me, which is a problem for me. Which is any show, when you're trying to send some sort of a message, don't do it so overtly. Okay, this natural conversation between Kamala and Nakia just popped up here. Like today, this was the, this the time she wanted to talk on it weird right same thing with the shoe thief the kid who stole the shoes now that's common kids you know shoes get stolen or go missing and you think someone stole your shoe but then it's over on the other side but that happens all the time uh on a daily basis so that was like an accurate thing to depict and that was like good thinking from the show to to show it but again were they showing you that it's a struggle to be a muslim woman or were they showing you the struggles of a muslim woman uh, side note the kid who stole the shoes same kid who was hanging up I saw that on For All Nerds TV. I think they're the ones who, sh who first said that, and I noticed it. Kind of cool touch. One final observation, Nakia's hair is shown here. The comic Nakia never would have worn her hijab this way. It's also weird that right outside the mosque, Kamala already took her hijab off, and she's just outside. Not just her, but a lot of the women there. That's really odd. Kamala gets permission from her mom to visit Zoe Zimmer's party. Zoe Zimmer used to be friends with her back when they were kids. They mentioned that in the prior episode. At the party, she's offered orange juice spiked with vodka from a guy who is not Josh. Josh is one of her superhero villains, and thankfully they're not doing him in this show because he's white. Just kidding. Because he's actually a character who uh, is one of her few villains. So if we're going to do him, let's give him attention that he deserves. So no, this guy right here isn't actually Josh. When they do do Josh, maybe season two, then uh, he should get all of the attention and love and she has few villains. He's one of the main ones. Discord. Uh, let's do it. Let's do him right. Next, we got our crush Kamran, who she bumped into earlier in the episode, flipping into the pool. Splash. And out he comes out the water looking all pristine. And the girls say, Mosh. Okay, so far, so good. I laughed at that exact joke. Next. What does that mean? Damn. And I go... Ah, that's another good joke. Of course, that kid wouldn't know what it means. So he would say, what does that mean? And she goes, damn, are understood. And then this happens. God is well Ah, oh, way to make something uncool. Let's translate this to like a Spanish situation. Adios mio. What does that mean? Damn. S sufficient, yeah? Did we really need Bruno to go, well, the translation of uh, what that means, it kind of lessens the coolness of it. I like being in on an inside joke. Uh, it's very obvious that this was being something catered to an audience who are unfamiliar with terms of in Islam, terms in Arabic. And um, the show tried way too hard to be inclusive of others rather than this is our genre. This is who it's directed at and who it's for. Let's go. In a comic book, you can kind of have an editor's note underneath written and it would say like what this actually means here. there, And you, they're not doing that in the show. You can't do it in a show. Because when you do, it sounds exactly like that. I'd have cut that scene right at the point where they go, damn, that would be like a funny little joke. Because True said, did you really need to know the translation of what Masha Allah really meant? If you're someone who doesn't speak Arabic and or never heard that term, did you really or did you get it based off of the tone, based off of how it goes, right? When they had Spider-Man No Way Home, Ned's Lola was just speaking her language, reacting, and I'm like perfectly very uh, understanding of what is happening even though i don't speak the language it's okay and that's a perfect example there there's probably many examples in the mcu where they didn't break to or even even give you the subtitles underneath you don't really need it um the over explaining is whack to me but again it shows you what what this show the creators who all happen to be women who don't wear hijabs 
what this show did was like they wanted to teach and were unqualified or they taught incorrectly or oh man how about i just say it just wasn't to my liking i'll fast forward to this scene as an example kamala everything's shaking and her brother amir says somebody grab the zum zum grab the zum zum now did you guys know that zum zum is the actual water that the mom's going to be spraying on him no but he said something that was understood to those who know he then starts reciting ayatul kursi and that again was like a moment i go oh 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 and it was a great moment so they know what to do sometimes and they do it properly sometimes so i'll give them the points for when they do it right but then there's the other times when they actually have to stop and explain to the audience in very awkward ways and that i'm going to call out now the show returns to being kamala again and she's all happy because kamran gave them a ride home she's dancing in the house she's in her own world with her mom is something wrong right now no no everything good the music comes back on she's dancing up this there she's on her phone and again with the doodles that the show has you can see the text and she's all flipping out that's how they are when i text them they go all oh, crazy old chillmonger's texting me that's how they so accurate depiction of you know how i'd be talking to the girlies <laughs> so the the doodles again which was very fun and very like comic book comic booky the actual artist who drew these comics should be getting paid most definitely but then we go into school and her nose is glowing uh oh her powers are acting up how fitting because they're going to go to the washroom to be alone with Nakia and again with the scenes that they actually dumb things down i'm to believe that this is the first or this is some Nakia and Kamala discussion about hijabs and why she wears the hijab my main issue is that unless your answer is quran and sunnah the holy book and the texts that were recited that came down from an angel unless that is her purpose for why she's wearing a hijab i don't want to hear it instead she says this well first what happens is nakia says you can tell me anything and kamala's having her superpowers on the other side of that washroom stall and doesn't actually reveal what's happening she says everything is changing so quickly to where nakia says you kidding me i wear a hijab what huh are you kidding between the hijab and the girlies, my parents can barely make eye contact with me anymore. Oh, we're trying to squeeze some dialogue in here about why she wears a hijab for the white audience. Okay, how about normalizing the hijab and making it seem like we would this would never come up? Like she's Muslim, she wears a hijab. That's that's normal itself. Actually, the one who's the oddball here is Kamala Khan because she's not wearing a hijab. But they didn't do that, did they? If the goal, and I feel like this should be the goal to normalize different looks in a variety of ways just have it happen and have no one talk about it in spider-man far from home there was a girl wearing a hijab in peter's class and we just didn't say anything about it because yeah she covers her hair new york's a pretty diverse city so of course someone in there is going to be dressed that way and it was a good little um, i mean for what it's worth she's just a side character but it was like yeah it's normal and uh they didn't go with normalization instead they whitewashed hijabs let's hear more how are you making it look so easy? Easy? It's definitely not easy. My whole life, I've either been too white for some people or too ethnic for others. And it's been this very uncomfortable, sucky in between. So when I first put this on, I was hoping to shut some people up. This is the bit here when I say it's unnatural and her starting with my whole life. This is my story. Oh, okay, cool. It just so happens that during the six issue series that this is the time where they actually have this discussion. Is this the first time Kamala actually decided, you know what, now is the time I'm going to ask her, how you feel about wearing a hijab? And she says that she's too white, but she's also too ethnic. This is not the first time that uh, the I'm too white, I'm too ethnic story has played out in anything, TV shows as far as uh, in any uh, genre, anywhere. <laughs> like any culture this is normal like you're not breaking any barriers here it's not original is what i'm trying to get at and it's also like wrong here's the part that irks me the most is when she explains when she says that she wore the hijab to shut people up again man if not unless she's talking about she's doing this because it's her faith and it's, it's related to the god she worships i'm actually like bro you're wearing a hijab for absolutely the wrong reason what I'll do because I like this show is I'll say, no, no, no. It's a result of her wearing her hijab. 
it's not the sole purpose she wears. She wears a hijab because she believes in God and she took a shahada and she's a Muslim. So that's the reason why. And then she's just saying, she's just telling you guys the effects of what she wears a hijab. And when I say you guys, I mean Kamala, who is like a proxy for you guys because they are totally talking to the audience. Again, it's not on you TV show, Ms. Marvel. It's act like you've, it's not on you to explain Islam to the millions. Act like you've been here before. Act like you'll be here again. There will be a season two. And you can slowly introduce concepts of this faith to the audience if that's what you want to do. Like maybe people are going to Google what's that wudu thing they were doing when they were turning on the water. Maybe, maybe we can like we maybe the show and will lead to questions that may be answered outside. But I don't need kafir da'wah. I don't need oh, what, a, what a great way to put them. End it right there. I love you. Kamala loves Nakia because you, the audience, should love her for doing something that makes her feel like herself. Next scene, Bruno gets accepted to Caltech, according to the guidance counselor. It's in California. We remember in the Black Panther movie that there's going to be like an outreach program in Oakland, California. Bruno Corelli, in the comics, goes to Wakanda to learn some stuff. And this may be Caltech, maybe the Wakandan division of, the, of schooling that they're doing in America as their outreach. This also may be nothing. We forward to this great shot. Look at this tableau of the emotion on the side of the screen. That drama, your drama class teacher would have loved this shot here. Bruno, he's not the main character, unfortunately, and he's not going to get to see to chill with Kamala after class. On Kamala's date with Kamran, you can see her brother Amir in the background. He's going to freak out. He's there with his fiance, Taisha. Taisha's name is Taisha. Sounds like a black girl name. And turns out it's a black girl. Look at the way they revealed it. <clears throat> Amir, Taisha. Kamala. Brother. Sister. I'm not overly fond of the way Taisha came into this shot. I think they were going with like surprise. Here's a subtle surprise that her skin color is black and she's actually a black American who probably have family who converted or she herself chose to be a Muslim. And it was kind of like, Ugh, is that your doing show? Maybe, maybe I'm just being sensitive, but I don't like the way that she was shown to be like that. Side note, also side note, compared to her comic book counterpart, let's look at the hijab that she's wearing in this show compared to the hijab, this beautiful jilbab that's, well, it was blue, but it started from her head and went all the way down. This is, this, what's going on? We've got... All of these women in the show who have hijabs, but it's always like a little bit of loose hair showing the baby hairs there and like not a sincere, uh, um, um, serious job at like covering her hair. What are we doing here? Period. A question mark. What kind of messages are this trying to be shown here? Because at, by the time we get this character and I just see, okay, look, she's wearing a loose kind of hijab that isn't, what what if they do the x-men i wonder if they're going to do suraya qadr without a niqab on or something unique i it, i don't know if this is a like sana amanat women who muslim women who don't wear hijab thing or is this a marvel studios hijabs are uh, thing something's happening and it's not nothing because it's just happening too often. It's not nothing. This show has the opportunity to normalize hijabs. It's not happening. Now let's cut over to the dinner scene where there is a good reason for why we're going to get exposition. It's Taisha. She and Amir are still in the getting to know each other period. So these are natural questions that would pop up and uh, explanations and backstory of the parents and their families that would be totally a normal occurring conversation. Good job here. Unlike I wear a hijab because this and that. This is how it's done. And the show ha had an understanding. Again, though, I could I can understand the desire for the show to explain what a partition is for the audiences who don't know what the partition was and how India divided with Muslims living in Pakistan. And I get the reason to want to do it. Uh, I'm just happy that it was done properly here and I can I can take it but we have to remember that this show goal is to get over Kamala Khan make her a hit character and by dedicating screen time to other aspects of the show it it's like it's like the assignment isn't understood the goal the main priority this relies on everything is for this brown-skinned girl named Kamala Khan to be liked. Any attention used, any sort of like focus, even for a little bit, 
going to Nakia, a mosque board election, or like subplots, anything that isn't contributing to the main story or the main goal of getting Kamala popular is like uh, bad, is a negative, is something that they don't understand, like the weight of how important it is for this project to have Kamala Khan be the next hit hero over at Marvel Comics or or the Marvel Studios specifically. I would love to have a season two of Ms. Marvel. And then I'd love for the, the, the show and the studio Feige to look at the numbers and say, wait, she can carry a movie. Let's put a $200 budget behind her. Let's get some actors in here from the other films and let's make Kamala in in like part of Marvel. I hope that some of the subplots here aren't uh going to drag this show too low. What happened to Sana's mother? Oh, we don't know. She disappeared that night just like many others did. There's a mystery here playing out and I kind of wish that we didn't get the Aisha answers and all of that so quickly. Maybe if we would have waited an episode two, because then the theories would have been all over the place with the Internet. Oh, who's Aisha? What's what's all about? Who's Sana? You know, Sana is actually the name of the editor. I wanted a week to happen before we kind of got the answers to who Aisha was, who it looks like at the end of the episode. It's Kamran's mother. That's how I interpreted it. But it's that woman that she keeps seeing over there reaching with her hand. The next scene is hilarious where her grandmother's face is so big, zoomed in on the screen. And then the joke dies because Kamala mentions, can you bring the camera away from your face? Okay, yeah, audience really needed that. Ugh, my gripe with this show. All that's needed for these jokes to hit is to edit out the second part where it just gets explained to the audience. Now we cut to this scene here where the show creators wanted you to see two Pakistani parents showing love to each other in front of their kids. If it wasn't for Slippery When Wet, your father and I may never have met. <laughs> that was gross. <laughs> Way to knock down those preconceptions. Again, the show it is not on you to... Okay. Thank you, Kevin Feige, Sana Amanat, Mira Minan, and Kate Gritman. When are Adil and Bilal coming back? Because they just seem to care more so about the superpowers, the story of the character, more so than this. I hope that the screenwriter of this episode isn't the same one for 345. This next scene here where they were explaining the different clicks. Of course, this is for the audience at home. But with the doodles, with the amount of fun that went into it, I, can, I, I have bigger problems with the representation in this show. We can give this one, let this one go. Nakia now has this totally natural bit of dialogue. Right now, she's helping me exercise our right as citizens of this great nation to participate in democracy. Listen, guys, Nakia is a stand-in character for the writer. Between this, between, well, we did six months on this history of Greece, but not the Persian history of... All right, we get it. Yep, history was written by the oppressor, all that. Understood. I'm very against the Nakia character at this point, two episodes in. And I'm not saying that history wasn't written by the oppressor or none of that. It's the presentation of what's happening. I'm, I believe what Nakia believes for the most part, everything in the show, I'm like, I'm with her. It's just the presentation of it, the directing of it. And the, you get what I mean. If you want to, I think everyone who knows me knows me. If this is the first time you're watching my YouTube channel, you don't know that maybe that's worth saying. I think the whack sort of preaching method is a detriment to the message you're trying to convey. In fact, you'll actually get pushback from the very people you're trying to convince of what your ideas are or, or the information that you're sharing might actually be rejected now, unfortunately, because of how it was conveyed. You're not the Zoe Zimmer. And now we get my favorite interaction of the show. The only one I know. <laughs> what? You have got to be kidding me. I'm a big fan. Wait, really? Yes. Everyone in the office is. That video that you made about low calorie popcorn, popcorn, popcorn. popcorn. That's all we get for the break room. Are now. you serious? I'm not joking you. Welcome back, Department of Damage Control Agent Cleary from Spider-Man No Way Home. Here you are. And he, he's a nice agent, you see? Because when the other one came in looking for, was it a Muslim? Or she said, uh, first she said, was it a Latinx? Ugh. It's supposed to be Latina now. I have so much to say about this topic. I'm joking. I don't. The female agent asks if it was a Middle Eastern, then asks, was it a South Asian? And Zoe's eye darted. Just say Indian. Come on now. Come on now. Really? Really? Just say Indian. It... Okay. 
all you Americans and your shitty geography every time we watch you on Jimmy Kimmel and no one knows where Africa is and they can't point at which sea is what ocean and and then we're going to just uh, pretend Zoe Zimmer knows what South Asia is. Okay, just say Indian. Now, Agent Cleary is such an ally. The hesitation. <sighs> Search every mosque. But the FBI audience, hey, audience, audience at home, the FBI is already doing surveillance on Muslims. And mosque. Just be respectful. The FBI is already surveilling. Let me know that. Got me. Thank you, Kevin Feige, Mira Minan, Kate Gritman, Sana Amanat. It happens. Muslims get surveillance by the FBI. And I think it's important for other people to know that the show, the project you are on right now is not the inform white folks what Muslims go through show. It is Kamala Khan's superhero show. And let's have every ounce and every word of dialogue to push this character into a higher uh, form of spotlight. When you do scenes like this, it like the gag comes it's hard to accept harder to accept we get some stories from the aunties family i heard you killed a man <gasps> dead happened during partition i actually believe that last story where she killed a man and it would be nice to get some further explanation on who this character is unfortunately a kid wanted to climb and fall and here comes Kamala to the rescue. One moment she's ground level, the other moment she's on the top roof of the building, all in her Captain Marvel costume. I'm going to use the Theo Butler explanation that she used the light energy to make her look like she was in costume. And that's how she got there so fast. Um, a kid is hanging and dangling, guys, hanging around the fall. And she had enough time to, oh, well, gotta check out this, go in my bag, get them to sing. I'm here, Kamala, uh, or Lime, was it? Light, 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 what was it called? It was called Nightlight. Nightlight is here, everybody. Good joke, Nightlight, by the way. It was hilarious when they said that. A uh, night monkey reference. Loved it. The boy reaches out, which calls back to the flashback of that mysterious woman who I believe to be Aisha, also reaching out. This flips out. Kamala loses concentration, and all of a sudden, he starts falling down, and she's trying her best. One of the ways she tries to pick him up is by embiggening her hand, sort of like Mr. Fantastic would, and trying to collect him. So I would need everyone who came on this YouTube channel and commented when I reacted to the trailer and was upset that they changed her powers, which is totally ridiculous. Well, because Mr. Fantastic's coming, they don't want to have two people with the same power i'm gonna need you to kindly femme la bouche i'm gonna need you to close your mouth you're gonna have to go to that trailer reaction and apologize she actually does in big in herself and superpowers have commonly doubled up let's look at quicksilver and makari both were had super speed let's look at any character with super strength how about characters who can all fly it appears that uh healing is something that deadpool and moon knight are going to be able to be doing and if that's the case, then Wolverine can't heal either when he comes later on. We have telepaths. We have multiple characters who have... What's another one? What's another one? There was another power that... That two, two common characters... Oh, shrinking. We've got Mystique who can change your face. A squirrel who can change your face. Kamala Khan's a polymorph. She's supposed to be able to change her face. I don't understand the reason of, oh, because Mr. Fantastic stretches. She just stretched in this episode. Characters can double up on powers. I rest my case. I rested it weeks ago. It's never been something that Marvel Studios has gone out and say. Their only explanation from interviews is, well, we're at a different point in continuity than we were in 2014 when Kamala Khan was introduced. And that, that doesn't fly for me either. It actually doesn't even address that her superpowers are different. It just addresses the way she gets her superpowers which is fine. She could inhale sewer mist and get her superpowers, and I'd be, I still wouldn't be fine with it, but I'd have an understanding of it. But that's not the issue that I am addressing. It is not the way she gets her powers. She puts on her bangle and she gets superpowers. That could be the way. It could be tied to her family, and that could all be possible. Idiots in the back, you could tell I'm triggered by this. That could be possible, but the superpowers of her not being a polymorph is absolutely unacceptable. None of the other superheroes got that. They all have the same powers in every medium except for Kamala Khan, Ms. Marvel. What they did was they casted correctly, they got the culture correct, and they got the things that they cared about correct. But her superpower, that, no. Kamala Khan, Ms. Marvel, this show, this is a, an idea. This is like a symbol of, look how not racist we are. We're Marvel Studios. They didn't care enough to get the superpowers correct.
Now Kamala Khan gets chased by the DODC, led by the anti-inclusive agent. She beats up all of the drones and escapes into Kamran's car. Thankfully, that agent is not just anti-inclusive, she has bad vision because they have no idea where Kamala Khan has gone. Terrible directing here. Inside the car, we see that woman. Kamala, I've been waiting a very long time to meet you. I'd like you to be my mom. So we do get a cliffhanger. Who is she and what's coming next? We're going to get answers. I think we're going to go to Karachi in Pakistan also, which is something that did happen in comic books. That's that guy with the red um, handkerchief covering his face. I think we'll get to see him, Red Dagger. And he doesn't have superpowers, but he is definitely a character from comics who we're going to see adapted. This show has a lot good going for it, and I hope that the bad going for it, which can quickly be edited and snippeted and muted and um, lessened, I hope that part does actually happen in episode 3, 4, 5, and 6. I am a fan of what's happening here so far, aside from the superpowers, which is it's very repetitive for me to continue uh, ragging on, but it is so unnormal for a comic book character to not have her comic book powers. It is ridiculous and deserves every ounce of vitriol coming here from this YouTube channel. I'm Chillmonger. Watch some of my other videos on Kamala Khan. I've got the origin of her story right over here. I was going to do, you can watch this right here. And then you can also watch some Riri Williams Ironheart stuff over there. Check out my videos.